Well, good day, everyone, and thanks for joining us today for, a, over, for an, an overview of Nolan's electronic payment for NetSuite solution. Without further ado, we're going to get started. Um, just want to tell you a little bit more about our um, organization. Sorry. Uh, Nolan Business Solution uh, has been a NetSuite partner since uh, 2006, so for quite, a, quite a number of years, as you can see. We have our US office in Boulder, Colorado, and we also have a development of our product happening in our UK office. We're quite heavily involved in the NetSuite community, uh, being on the um, Partner Advisory Board. Uh, we've been a NetSuite solution provider for a number of years. We have, uh, we're part of the NetSuite Developer Network as well. So I'm um, very familiar with the NetSuite world and, and the development framework. So uh, over since our starting working with NetSuite, we have developed a fixed asset management module, which was later acquired by NetSuite. Uh, so if you're using that module, you'd be working with some Nolan code already. And then we focused a lot of our efforts in developing cash management solutions with our electronic payment module, which is what we're going to review today, and our advanced bank reconciliation. More recently, we launched a product uh, in, called Integrated Business Accounting, which can help organizations addressing uh, processing of intercompany transactions between multiple entities. We also have uh, some consulting expertise with some specific industries. Uh, so more specifically, we can assist and provide consulting services if you are in the professional services industry, project management, uh, or a big specialization of ours is healthcare and medical management. So that's a little bit about Nolan as an organization. Today, as indicated, we're going to focus on electronic payments for NetSuite and uh, hopefully demonstrate uh, how fast, convenient, and simple to use it is uh, from a process standpoint. The idea behind our product is to uh, help within NetSuite capture the right vendor bank detail information that can then be leveraged to produce bank files uh, that can be directly uploaded to your bank and uh, so that they can process. Uh, those payments for you. Um, if you still uh, are in the business of doing a lot of paper checks, this is where you can kind of save a lot of time by eliminating that manual processing of checks and automating payment to vendors uh, so that it, they are done more of in an electronic fashion. We are a fully integrated NetSuite bundle, so you'll see when we start the demonstration here that I will be working right within the NetSuite environment. Uh, so from an end user standpoint, um, they, they have the look and feel and they feel like they are working with a NetSuite application. We support, we're a very flexible tool, uh, configurable. We can be very uh, flexible in creating user definable bank file formats. And uh, the advantage of that is that we can address most bank requirements when it comes to electronic payments. We do include uh, additional steps uh, with the payment process, such as a payment cancellation process, uh, emailing, remittances. So we're going to go through all of that today. Our solution also supports multiple currencies, and we provide a full audit trail of your electronic payment process as well. So as I demonstrate, I've been showing you the bill payments, what kind of audit trail we're tracking. Uh, we're even tracking communications with your vendor around those payments, etc. So the process we're going to walk through today is we're going to start by discussing how um, in order to start uh, paying vendors via electronic payments, the key element is to capture the required vendor bank details on your vendor record itself. So when you install the Nolan bundle, there's an additional tab uh, of information that will be uh, used to capture that information that we require to incorporate in the bank file format. So this is where we're going to start by looking at a vendor record and uh, capturing all that bank detail required for electronic payments. Once that data is captured, a user simply enters a vendor bill the same way that they are doing today. So we really, really try to incorporate our process into a regular NetSuite process, which is why you're going to see the screens are very familiar. The user will continue entering their vendor bills the way that they're used to. Uh, the only difference now is that those vendor bills will inherit 
bank detail information uh, set up at the vendor record level in order to be able to process those electronically. Once the vendor bills are captured, then they are and approved. So that's the other um, thing to mention here is we don't interfere with any process you might have around entering a vendor bill in the system. So if you have a workflow whereby you are pre-approving vendor bills before they are released for payment, et cetera, uh, you have the ability to, um, to continue doing that without our product interfering, interfering with any of it. So once your bills are fully approved and open for payment, this is when we can uh, go ahead and generate the bill payments right within NetSuite. And if there is a need to have a second bill payment approval process, we do have a feature and a tool allowing you to do that also. So during the demonstration today, we are going to generate our bill payments and I have incorporated that additional step for a bill, bill payment approval process. That step is not required. So it's something you turn on or off depending on whether you want to do that or not. Um, but today we're gonna demonstrate the whole thing. So we're gonna go ahead and approve our bills, uh, our bill payments, and then at that point, they will be, that information will be readily available to uh, incorporate into our bank file. So we're gonna generate our bank file for all the bill payments processed, which will capture that file into our NetSuite file cabinet. And at that point, this file is available for upload to your bank portal. There are two ways that this can be accomplished. Um, majority of our clients for now will manually grab that file from the file cabinet and discuss a process with their bank whereby they would log into their bank online portal and upload, upload the file for payment processing. So the bank would take it from there and process the payments as indicated in the file. More and more, uh, we hear from you that you want to have a, a much more integrated solution. So we do have an option uh, of a scheduled integration with a uh, middleware that we work with, an organization called Tierra. They have a, an integration suite called TIPS. And um, basically, I'll talk about it a little bit later so we can, we can park that for now. But essentially, it allows for a scheduled automated integration that grabs the file from the NetSuite file cabinet and pushes it right through to an SFTP bank site. Again, more on that towards the end of the webinar. So once we've uploaded our bank file, generally your bank will provide you with some sort of confirmation report uh, confirming that the payments have been processed as such. If there was any issues with one of those payments, we have a payment cancellation process we can follow, which will be demonstrated as well. And then for all uh, payments that were successfully processed, you can leverage our email remittance function as well. So this is kind of visually what we're gonna walk through today. Um, so without further ado, let's go into NetSuite and walk through that process together. So I'm going to start with the first element, uh, which is capturing the vendor bank detail uh, in NetSuite. So what we're what we're seeing here is a vendor record. Um, this is an organization uh, called Specialized, and we're actually going to be processing a payment um, for this organization. We can see the vendor records, so you'll see uh, a little bit busy because I'm in a demo testing environment uh, whereby we tend to capture a lot of information. Um, but you can still see the basic framework of NetSuite here with your basic vendor information. So again, that doesn't change. You continue capturing your vendor data the way that you always have. Once you install our bundle though, is you'll have an additional tab on the vendor record that is by default labeled bank payments, but that can be changed to, um, to be a little bit more user intuitive if you have a different uh, terminology in your organization. So we're looking at the bank payment tab at the moment. Um, what you're looking at is all the bank details that I need to capture for the various payment types that I might be processing. So if you look at the bank payment definition in the middle section here, you can see that we can accommodate various 
payment types with our solution. So I've got a bank payment definition for a domestic ACH is what we're going to work with today and keep relatively simple, but we can also accommodate international formats like BAC, so SIPA. Uh, we've worked with various banks with various XML formats, CSV formats. So we can generally accommodate, we can have a discussion with your bank and accommodate whatever uh, bank format they would like to see the payment information captured. So today, as I said, we're going to focus on domestic ACH to keep it relatively simple. And then the idea is that on the vendor record is to capture all the necessary bank details that will be used to create that bank file later. So this is where we're going to source the information. So for instance, uh, I'm capturing a lot more data than is potentially required for an ACH payment here. So that's not to say that this is all required fields. We build this form and customizing it uh, so that it is unique to your organization and will be kind of defined and labeled uh, for specifically the pieces of information that you will need. But this is just an example in our testing and demo environment here where you know sometimes we need to capture the bank account name we need to capture the currency uh, if we're supporting multiple currencies we're going to capture things like a remittance email address for our re email remittance process we're going to capture some bank data often as well for ach or wires so we'll capture a bank name bank country country code Depending on the payment type, we might have to track additional pieces of information. For instance, Wells Fargo checks requires the specification of a delivery code. Um, so we can kind of create some intuitive drop down lists that automatically drives check delivery codes as required uh, by the bank. So during the implementation and the configuration process, that's what we work through with you in, in creating an intuitive a bank payment tab allowing you or your users to to track all the necessary information so we can see a little bit more here of wire type information so i've got you know a routing number an account number if we're talking about international wires perhaps we'll need to uh, track a swift or bic number an iban number and then sometimes uh, each bank might have a very specific need jp morgan has some very specific details here that they want to capture and then also, and um, last but not least, some NACHA details. So if, you're, if your bank is looking at processing your ACH um, payments using the NACHA file format, uh, we've also done a lot of work with clients and are very familiar with that concept also. So once we've captured the bank detail information on the vendor record, then we we are ready to process our bills and our payment. If you recall earlier, I indicated that the process of capturing your vendor bill will typically not change. So you will enter your bill, uh, your vendor bill, just the way you are doing today, pushing them through an approval workflow if required, um, so that until the bill is fully approved and open and available for payment. So for our friends here at Specialized, we're gonna focus on the two bills that we're seeing at the bottom here. So we've got two bills that are way overdue. So you can tell my demo data is, is might be a little bit old, but still it still works. Um, so we got two bills here that we're gonna to wanna to pay. And those bills have inherited uh, information because this vendor is flagged as an electronic payment vendor. Uh, the bills captures the information required uh, for payment processing as well. The reason why I'm highlighting that is if I open this bill is because we trickled down to the bill level necessary information around payment methods, it also allows you the flexibility of changing a payment method for a specific bill. So let's say that for whatever reason, this bill needs to be processed using a wire instead of an ACH, because this vendor is typically um, paid through an ACH payment, but for whatever reason, there's some urgency, uh, something we need to use a wire file format. By us trickling down that detail to the bill level, um, we have the ability to make that change at the bill level. So your bill will inherit the defaults from the vendor but that can be changed at the bill level for 
special and unique situations. So let's close that bill. So now we're ready. We have some open bills that we want to process. So um, I'm going to go to my electronic payment tab here in NetSuite. Uh, this is where we're actually going to process our bill payments, starting by going to our pay bills by EP screen, which is what we're seeing here on this screen. So this is really, the screen is, is a selection mechanism for your bill payments. So it will capture, based on the criteria that you specify in the header section, it will capture all the open bills that are available for payment based on those criteria, and gives you an opportunity to uh, mark all, unmark all, select a few, do partial payments, um, and, and determine how much and which bills you want to pay for a vendor. So it starts by selecting the cash account, which I've already selected here. So this is the cash account that I want to pay money out of in combination with the accounts payable. So this, is, this has to do a little bit with your GL distribution that will be associated with your payment. And then we determine which payment types we want to process. So in this case, we want to process an ACH, uh, domestic payments, and then we can specify start and end date. And this is in relation to your bill due date. So depending on the criteria that you put here, what you end up seeing on the bottom of the screen and on the list here are all the bills that are due um, from the beginning of time up until today, May 17. So these are all the open bills that are flagged as due. And as I indicated before, now I can unmark all or mark all, select some bills um, individually if I'd like. So let's uh, go ahead and pick a few bills. We want to pay for Pearly Zumi. We do want to pay Specialized as an example. And you'll notice that as I click on and I make a selection of invoices, you'll notice the middle section gets updated with a count of how many bills I've selected and the total amount of money that I will be processing. So we'll continue and maybe pick Federal Express, a couple of Federal Express, indicated also that you can do partial payments. So maybe I don't wanna pay this full invoice because we got an amount in dispute or something. So maybe I'll just pay $4,000. So uh, you have the ability to do partial payments. You'll notice on the screen, although I don't have an example here, that we also support uh, payment discounts. Um, so if there is a, a need to process or to take into consideration payment discounts, uh, we can accommodate that. So as I build my batch here, for lack of a better term, uh, again, we're tracking how many bills are selected, how much in total I'll be spending and then the payment date that we're gonna associate with this. So the nice thing about this payment date here, it gives you a little bit of flexibility. Let's say that you want to, um, you know that your AP person is going on vacation next week, uh, but you want them to still prepare the, the batch. So they have the ability to prepare a batch, maybe put a future payment date. Uh, that will be the indication uh, to the bank when to actually process the batch. So, so those are all elements that we talk about with your bank. At the at implementation time. A couple additional pieces of information that can be tracked here. We got a submission reference. Sometimes, depending on the bank, they will require some sort of a uh, sort of a, a, a generic piece of information as to what this payment batch is for. So, if it's a payroll run or a vendor bill run, we don't see that as much anymore. But it used to be fairly frequent that it was a requirement to have that in the header of the the file. So, this is where kind of that information could be captured. So still available if need be. As you process the bill payments, the vouchers, the payment vouchers can be automatically printed. So that's the checkbox option here. And if there is a need for one vendor or multiple vendors to actually pay bills individually, so instead of consolidating multiple bills into one payment, which is what we're gonna do here, we can generate bill payments for each individual selected invoices as well through this checkbox. The next couple fields, department, class, location, those are my three GL segmentation, uh, kind of the default ones from NetSuite in this case. So whatever those are in your environment uh, would be labeled as such. And then you have the, uh, the opportunity then to specify from a GL distribution standpoint where you want the bill payments to be posted. So possibly not simply cash and accounts payable, 
but you might require a distribution at the department class or location level. Finally, but not least on the screen is the ability to restrict uh, a payment selection process to a specific vendor. We have had organizations in the past where they have, you know, maybe one major vendor that they work with, with hundreds, thousands of invoices. So sometimes it becomes easier to do a payment run for a specific vendor uh, in that case. So that's what this screen would allow you to do, the selection mechanism here. In red, we can see that we also incorporate in our process bill payments that would have been generated through the normal or the usual NetSuite bill payment process. So during implementation, we'll have a discussion with you as to how do you want to generate your bill payments? Would you like to use this screen, which is um, the Nolan pay bill selection process? Or because, for instance, we've had some clients that say, well, I would like to have a little bit more uh, filtering capabilities when I select my payments. I want to be able to look at some custom fields we're tracking. Then we can leverage the pay bill selection screen from NetSuite that will allow you to incorporate additional filters and perhaps generate the bill payments that way, yet incorporate them as part of the electronic process using this little checkbox here. So that kind of walks us through this whole bill payment process. Um, so I'm ready now, I've selected my invoices, decided how much I wanna pay, and I'm gonna go ahead and process payments. So now what is happening in the background is based on the selection made, a bill payment is generated for each selected vendors. The bill payment will indicate which invoices it's been applied to and we are starting the process of tracking bill payment information such as uh, you know check numbers and all that kind of that kind of stuff and that will eventually make those bill payment ready for processing and incorporating in a bank file let's take a look at a bill payment that was generated before we go through um, another approval process here so we can see here the three bill payments that have been generated, Pearly, Zumi, Specialized, and Federal Express. So those are the ones that we just processed today. Let's continue working with our friends at Specialized and let's take a look at that bill payment. Just wanna show you um, kinda what your bill payment is gonna look like once after it's processed through our bundle or our solution. So you're gonna have elements like, you know, this has been paid by EP, what file format or what payment type was this paid for? Was it an ACH, was it a wire? So we, from an audit trail standpoint, we track all that information. If there's additional pieces of data that, um, that is required to, to see, uh, that's also tracked on the bill payment. So we can see here a, a check delivery type. Um, so we got a little bit more information than we would like for an ACH payment here on this screen, just due to the fact that uh, I'm in a, de a demo in a, in a testing environment. So we keep things as simple as possible, yet providing you with the information and the audit trail that you require on your bill payment record itself. So what you will notice here is because I have turned on the bill approval process, this bill payment is generated at this time, but it is sitting in a pending approval status. So indicating that it, it needs to be approved before it can be incorporated into a bank file and processed as such. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. Uh, so I'm, so that is an additional module that you can, like I said, decide to turn on or off. If you do not wanna go through a bill payment approval process, right after generating the bill payment, what I just did, you would have the ability to automatically uh, have the bank file being generated because we don't need that extra approval step. In this case, I'm stopping the process here and I'm saying, well, no, before we create a bank file, a management level needs to take a look at the bill, at the bills and approve them for payments. So this is what we're looking at right now, the additional module here. So we're gonna go ahead and approve payments going to select the cash account in question where we're going to see that we have three bill payments that are pending approval. 
Um, so we're going to go ahead and so at this point I can highlight a payment and perhaps reject it. If I reject it, it will just uh, completely reverse the um, it, it won't reverse actually if I'm not mistaken it voids. So it will void the bill payment and reopen the invoices so that they can be selected for payment again. But at least you're kind of tracking um, that the fact that there was a bill payment generated and it was later rejected or voided. In this case though, I'm going to approve them all. And the result of that will be if we refresh this bill payment here, we will see that our bill payment has now moved from a pending approval status to approved. So we can see here that it's approved. So that is the indication now that I can incorporate this bill payment in my bank file. So the additional step here then is to generate our bank file. So oftentimes from a process standpoint, what I see happening here is you'll have the AP department uh, generate the bills, just prepare all that information, right? They enter the vendor bills, they prepare the vendor bill payments, then management will come in and do bill approvals. And once that's completed, then the process goes back to your accounting team where the actual bank file will be processed and uploaded to the bank. So that's what we're going to look at here. Um, we're going to select the same account. Now, as I indicated before, this is just a little bit busy to, to the fact that we have a lot of testing happening here. But for the most part, you'll just have a list of the cash accounts that you have in your organization. So it becomes fairly intuitive to just select the cash account you want to process payments for. And here are the three approved bill payments available to be selected and incorporated into a bank file. So we're gonna submit that and generate our file. It's taking a moment. Well, so at this stage, I'm not sure, we might have to come back. So maybe I'll just um, have a few discussion. The file generation, it normally doesn't take that long. So I don't know if there's um, something happening with NetSuite environments at the moment, um, but we're gonna come back in a moment. So uh, at this point, all of these bill payments are incorporated into a file. Um, that file, as I indicated through um, some of my discussion points earlier on the slide deck, was that, you know, that file could be of an XML format, could be a CSV file. Um, we've done uh, text tab delimited files. So it really comes back to having a discussion between who we have. So record. So now what has happened is in the NetSuite file cabinet, a bank file has been produced. Um, so I'm actually going to go and, and take a look at that file directly in my cabinet. So under my NSCP folder here is where my files, my bank files are being generated and available to be transmitted. Now, if you recall from the slide deck, there's two ways that this, so this is a file that we just generated. So if I just download it to give you an appreciation of what a bank file could look like, we're gonna open this file. So this is a typical XML. It's gonna be potentially a little cryptic for most of you, um, but an XML, XML format is becoming more and more popular. And uh, essentially we just, that, that is, this is part of our work and our implementation is we will build that structure. Um, we have a lot of uh, predefined formats that we can leverage from previous projects and based on our experience. So, you know, we try to, to minimize the, um, the complexity of the deployment on your, uh, on your site by leveraging something we've already done. Um, but a typical file will incorporate some sort of 
payment run header where some basic information about the total pay, uh, run will be captured, how many payments, total amount of money. And then there's usually uh, information required for each individual payment, starting with oftentimes some originating party information. So that would be you as a payer. Uh, need to capture you know, your company name and address and that type of information, uh, followed by your receiving party. So in this case, we're gonna pay Pearly Zumi. We need to capture in the file you know, vendor address. We need to capture some bank data. So what we do during the implementation is we build, we create what we call a bank payment definition that will clearly define what field or what piece of data needs to show up where in the file. So that when we click generate file, it will just go and capture all the data that has been saved on the vendor record or on the bill or on the bill payment and put that into a format that the bank wants to see. So back to my integration discussion or my process, now that the file is sitting here, I need to transmit that to the bank. Two options here. So for a moment, I'm gonna go back to my slide deck. If you remember, I indicated that there was two ways that a file could be uploaded to the bank. It could be manually downloaded, like I just did, uh, to maybe a server location and on, on, your, on your client site, and then a manual upload to the bank online portal can occur. So a lot of our clients are still doing it that way. For an additional cost, we can discuss a scheduled integration with a middle, middleware, uh, which is a tool from an organization called Tierra, and it's an integration with the TIPS product. And maybe to provide a bit of a visual around that is um, the diagram that I've put together here. So if you, if we follow what we just did, is we use Nolan Electronic Payment on the top left here. We processed and generated bill payment, which created a file, a bank file into our NetSuite file cabinet. With the Tierra integration product suite, Tierra or TIPS can monitor the NetSuite file cabinet on a specified schedule. So that is totally definable by you, how often you would like that integration to run. And each time the integration is run, TIPS takes, take a look, takes a look at the file cabinet. If it finds a new file sitting there, it will grab the file and move it to the bank's SFTP site. So that's what we call their scheduled integration. So the nice thing about this one is that there is no manual user intervention required. Once the bank file is generated in NetSuite, um, we just let technology take care of everything and uploading this to the bank for actual payment processing. Okay. So we're almost through now. We um, kind of have a file. We've uploaded it to the bank, uh, either through a manual process or a scheduled integration. Now we will likely hear back from the bank, uh, some sort of confirmation report, each bank is different on that process, but generally, you know, you'll have some sort of confirmation from the bank that you, your payments have been successful or not. If you have any payments that were rejected for whatever reason, maybe a vendor forgot to update you on their bank details, that does happen. Uh, you have the ability to very easily delete a payment from a bank payment file. So uh, that process is as simple as selecting the bank file for which you want to delete a payment. Um, so we're going to select our bank file here. It will indicate the three payments that we've uploaded. And I'm going to go ahead maybe, and uh, I was informed that the payment for Federal Express was not successful. Bank details were incorrect. So we're going to go ahead and delete that. What happens at this time is we are deleting the bill payment completely and reopening the associated invoices so that they can be selected for a bill payment run later. For the bill payments um, that have been successful, you have the ability uh, or the option to send email remittances with our product. So you can fire off, you can send email remittances for your ACH payments, your wire payments, right out of NetSuite. Similar concept to deleting a payment, what we're doing here now is 
is working with our successful payments. So we're selecting the bank file um, for the payments that were successful. We can see that two of them were successful. I've got email remittance addresses on the vendor record that are displaying here for me. So I can confirm that this email will actually go through. And then I'm gonna click email. What we do here in the back end is we create a generic email uh, based on a predefined email body, subject and body that you define. Um, and then what we attach to the email is the payment voucher for your vendor record. The nice thing about some banks will tell you that they can do the email remittance process for you. Um, generally, there's a cost associated with that. And also the nice thing about doing this with Nolan is then you have um, an audit trail of that communication with your client also. So if I kind of look at, one, at that um, specialized bill payment again, and I'm going to refresh it, we're gonna look at all like the complete audit trail, including that email communication that gets associated with the bill payment now. So here's my bill payment. If you remember, we talked about approval processes under the custom tab a little bit. I wanna uh, bring your attention to some additional fields that have been populated from an audit trail standpoint also. So for all the bill payments we generate, we will generate what we call an EP audit reference, which will always capture the file name that was uploaded to the bank and the payment sequence in that file. So you always have full uh, visibility as to you know, which file uh, that payment was processed with. And in terms of email remittances on the communication tab, we can see that email as being sent off on May 17th. So that, you know, if you have a vendor on the phone that says, hey, I haven't received the payment or I haven't received information, um, you, you know exactly what has happened and you can kind of refer back to that communication. So simply what we do here is, as I indicated is, actually I will show you, this is mine, I believe. So if I go back to my email system here, I don't know if I will have received it yet. But here are some of the payment vouchers that my email address was associated with. Um, I think number two is the one we were looking at. So here's the example of, so we simply uh, define in the module and you define that, you define the message you wanna have to your client. But the key element here is the attachment where we simply attach the vendor um, payment voucher directly from NetSuite. So this is your preferred payment voucher that you define and you can completely configure in NetSuite. So again, we're not reinventing the wheel here, we're just leveraging NetSuite functionality. So at this time, um, I would say that that probably, that does kind of wrap up the whole process. Um, that we walk through and maybe in summary, let, let us go through that again. So with our solution, uh, we look at capturing the required vendor bank detail on your vendor record, allowing you to continue processing vendor bills just the way you are today. Um, but those vendor bills will now inherit some vendor bank detail that will be required for later processing of payment. Once the bills are approved and available for payment, we can leverage our pay bill by EP screen to select the bills that we wanna pay and generate those bill payments. At this point, you can decide to just simply go ahead and incorporate these bill payments into a bank file, or you can introduce an additional approval step here, uh, whereby bill payments are approved before they are submitted for inclusion in the bank file. The bank file will reside in your NetSuite file cabinet where it can be uploaded to your bank in one of two ways, either manually, so by yourself just downloading the file from the NetSuite file cabinet and uploading it to your bank online portal, or we can talk about an option whereby we schedule an integration with a middleware that will pull the file from your file NetSuite cabinet and push it to your bank's SFTP site on a predefined scheduled. 
once payments are processed, uh, then based on the confirmation report, we looked at the ability to delete unsuccessful payments or payments that failed or completing or doing email remittances for payments that were successful. So at this time, I'd like to uh, open it for questions. Um, and what I'm gonna do in the meantime is possibly just include this on the screen. We and we let's see if we have some questions. Yeah, go ahead, Dylan, uh, thanks. Does EP work with banks in Canada and other uh, countries outside of the US? Yes, absolutely. Um, we can, we can work. That's the, that's the nice thing about our product is that we're not, it, it's not like uh, predefined formats that are only going to work with certain banks or certain predefined formats is our tool should really be viewed as a very flexible, customizable, configurable tool that will help address bank file requirements across the globe. Um, we have worked with very large organizations that are global, uh, that have to process domestic wires in the States, international wires across the world. Um, so yes, absolutely, we can support a, a number of, of banks and associated bank formats. Perfect, thank you. So at this, uh, at this time, if there's no more questions, um, I want to take the opportunity to, to thank everyone for taking the time to, uh, to look at our solution. There will definitely be a follow-up from our organization to see if uh, you would like the opportunity to discuss further what your specific needs might be. But in the meantime, if you want to contact us, feel free to send an email at either US NetSuite or US Sales would be your second option. And here's a phone number for you as well, where you can obtain more information. And uh, feel free to visit our website, where we also capture a little bit uh, more information.